Okay, today I'm going to review the chip. How Two Americans Invented the Microchip and Launched a Revolution by T.R. Reed. So this book, it's a short book. It's like 260 pages. I think it came out a while ago. Um, yeah, first copy was came out in 1985. So it's, a, it's an older book. But it's about the history of how the microchip was invented. And I've, I've read a couple books about history of computing and how computers were invented. Uh, the one I reviewed previously is The Dream Machine. I really like that one. It was really good. And this is just another like short book that I picked up at the same time to kind of add to my knowledge about that story, like how computers were invented, what what were the, the series of technical innovations that led to the computer, and you know how did the theory and the manufacturing and the engineering all come together to kind of create the computer revolution. And so this book, I was hoping, would add to that kind of base of knowledge. And it was pretty good. Um, it's okay. There's some drawbacks in it, but it was decent. At 260 pages, it moves pretty quickly. It's a really easy read. It's pretty engaging. It's clearly meant for um, like a very non-technical audience. So it doesn't get a really deep into the like technical aspects of the microchip. But it does a pretty good job about giving a lot of background about the microchip and what was important about it. So within this whole book, I think there's probably maybe like 60 pages right in the middle where the author is really talking about like how the microchip was built and how it works and what was the technical innovation that led to the microchip and you know what was different about it. The book spends a lot of time giving background information on kind of why this moment in time was important. And the book also gives a lot of time to the two inventors. They were like co-inventors, so they didn't really know each other when they were inventing the microchip. But one of the inventors was Jack Kilby at Texas Instruments in Texas. And then the other inventor was Robert Noyce, uh, who founded Intel with uh, Gordon Moore. And Noyce and, and Kilby, they kind of had the same idea at the same time. Which There was this problem where it's like even after... Uh, the silicon transistor was invented at, I believe it was Texas Instruments. Uh, you had to like wire them all together, so you couldn't put that many transistors into like a computer because it, the number of interconnections just kept growing and growing and growing. So Kilby and Noyce both had this idea to, to create this monolithic uh, structure where you had all the parts on the same semiconductor, uh, and that's like what we call an integrated circuit, which is the basis. It's the basic like foundation of all computers today because you can just build all the interconnections into the design and you don't have to manually wire anything up. So they invented this technology and it's really interesting when the book's talking about that. However, the book spends a huge amount of the probably 200 pages, maybe a little bit less, talking about like the background of the inventors or giving random backgrounds uh, about technology that's not really doesn't really add to the story that much um i still like the book but uh it doesn't i don't i didn't feel like the author really grasped what was interesting about this story and this really is noticeable at the end of the book because like if you read a book like the climax should come probably 80 85 percent of the way through the book and that should be like the peak of your interest in what's happening and instead, like, the chip is invented in the middle of the book, and then the end of the book just has random, like, afterward stuff where it talks about what the inventors did after the microchip and kind of how people viewed them and, and things like that, which really misses what's interesting about this story because, like, the microchip is at this pivotal point in history when humans were inventing an entirely new class of tools like it's this really you know, monumental point in uh, our history where we we like evolution discovered information processing and biological systems and then 
after, you know, after billions of years, you get humans who can think better. And then we start inventing artificial tools. And then finally, we get to this point where we invent artificial tools that will have the same capabilities, uh, potentially, as, you know, what our brains could do. So it's this really, like, recursive theme that goes back from the beginning of life that, I mean, it's like, it's such an interesting moment in history when we first created, like, Turing Complete Computers uh, and when we first were, like, getting ones that are good enough that we can really experiment with uh, teaching them how to do things and, and like, coding. And, and it's just, it's such a fascinating point in history. And this book seems to take the view that what's interesting about microchips was that they sold a lot or that they're in a lot of calculators now. Like, the author doesn't have a deep enough appreciation for the role that computing will play in humanity so that it's not given the same weight. It's kind of treated as just like a really nifty invention, like uh, the same same way that we would view like the light bulb, which like the light bulb was important, but, you know, it's just a light bulb. It, it might have changed people's lives, but we had light before and we have different kinds of light now. And, you know, it might have been this really interesting invention, but... It, computers are like the first steam engine or you know it's, it's these transformative technologies and I don't think the author had the same weight or didn't he wasn't like they weren't aware of the weight of the this invention in history and what it meant and so it was kind of handled I think as if it's just some neat technical thing and so he didn't really like the author didn't spend a lot of time really delving into like the computers and like what's different about this and all the interesting things I wanted to know about. And that's what the book, uh, The Dream Machine, really did well because by talking about J.C.R. Licklider, uh, that was someone who really understood the role of computers in, in like human life and, and what we could do with them and how it could expand our ability to think and, and process information in the world and what that might mean long term. So that book really carries like the weight of what computers are and what they will probably be uh, for us in the future. And this book treats it kind of as if it's just some like interesting, um, mechanical device that we created that's ended up selling a ton of copies and, and being, you know, important economically, but it doesn't really have this, the full weight of what this invention meant for, uh, everyone and, and the future. So I was kind of disappointed on that front as well. But despite all those like drawbacks to the book, it's really quick and it's pretty engaging because the author's good at writing. And so even when the author goes off on a tangent or is talking about something that's kind of ancillary to the main story, it's still easy to follow along and it keeps your attention pretty easily. So if you're interested in the invention of the microchip, you should definitely pick this book up. They'll be aware that it's going to be 60 or 80 pages that's really core to the story. So if you're not you can skim the other parts and you're probably not going to miss too much. Like at the end of the book, there's this whole aside thing where he talks about uh, manufacturing like uh, techniques in Japan and how there's this guy that helped them use statistical methods to like improve quality control. And it has nothing to do with semiconductors almost at all. But it that story is like just kind of put in at like the very end of the book where the climax should be. So there are some weird things about this book that I didn't enjoy where it kind of feels like the author missed the boat a little bit, but there's enough good stuff within the story. And uh, even when the author's not on point, it's it holds your attention good enough that it's not painful to get through. So if you're interested in the subject, definitely pick this book up and give it a read. Um, it does fill in some gaps, and, it, and I enjoyed uh, kind of getting a different perspective on what happened at the time. So I hope you guys like this review. I've got more reviews coming soon. So like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.